Hey, uh, good good day everybody. I hope that you well, well kept of the Lord. Well, it's been a minute since I was here to just share such a message. I feel like I have a pile up of messages that I haven't been sharing. Please uh, do forgive me. Uh, my YouTube has also been acting up for some days and uh, so I didn't have access even when I was receiving some of these messages. I was not able to come through and post them through my YouTube. Now, I'm going to share with us a message today, and I think I'll, I'll pick up from here, henceforth, from what the Lord has been putting or depositing in my heart. Uh, this this is, has been quite a season for me. Um, I've been in the U.S. for some few months, and it's been quite a season, a season of stretching, such a renewal of the mind, and just God doing a deep work also within me. And um, I know that this is for the benefit of where he is taking me. I don't want to share much of that right now so that I can keep this message uh, short and brief and uh, that it can help somebody. So, Father, I want to thank you because of what I want to share. I want to thank you because of this message. I want to thank you because uh, you're breathing upon it, Holy Spirit, that when it comes to the ears of the hearer, it will be of benefit. Lord, as I speak it, Lord, I speak it in wisdom, I speak it with love, I speak it with uh, all the power of the Holy Ghost, the enabling power of the Holy Spirit, so that, Father, it can carry the transformative power that it should have, Lord. I thank you for every hearer, I thank you for their lives and what this message shall do in, in them and, and, and for them. Holy Spirit, you're most welcome that as I speak. It's you that will be heard. It's your voice that will be heard. It's your sound that will be heard. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And so um, I'm going to start by reading some scriptures for us. And then um, this will help us to really understand what the Holy Spirit has been speaking to me. But this has struck me as the most important message for the season what I'm about to share has struck me as the most important message for the season. And I believe that somehow it's going to help somebody. It's going to help a ministry. It's going to help a child of God somewhere. It's going to help a minister somewhere. So I'll go straight to Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Matthew 25 uh, from verse 42 all the way to verse 45. Uh, Matthew 25 from verse 42. To verse 45 so yes uh, for I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink I was a stranger and you did not invite me in I needed clothes and you did not clothe me I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me they will all though also answer Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Amen. And I'm also going to read, I'm also going to read from 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 5. Which says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Hallelujah. Then I'm going to read another verse from 1 Corinthians 13 verse 2. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 2 which says, if I have the gift of prophecy and can perform all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And so those are the scriptures that I would like us to look into even as I share with us what the Lord has put into my heart. So this this is what I feel, um, this is what I sensed him telling me through the many experiences that he's taken me through in this season. Some of them not very easy, 
but his grace has been sufficient you understand so through all the things that he's allow allowed me to face the message has been let love be the center of everything it's not what you're doing but how you're doing it that really matters so it's not the what for you as a servant of god a child of god as a minister um it's not what you could be called into the corporate space it's not what you're doing there it's not the assignment that god has given you in the marketplace that matters but the how so the how of how you're conducting whatever assignment god has given you as a business person as a leader in the ministry as a student in that university whatever assignment that god has given you in whatever as a worship leader as a musician as an artist as a prophet as an apostle as a pastor teacher of the word it's not the what it's not that assignment that is so important but it is how the how how are you conducting that assignment that is very important and what the lord has shown me is that many of us have forgotten that the essence of ministry is nothing else but love the essence of every assignment is love no matter where that assignment is being done from whether it is in the marketplace whether it is a businessman whether it is a husband or a wife whether as a child in that house the whole essence of you being in that particular position is love but the love of many has waxed cold many people are more worried about everything else going right but not how they're doing things going right so how are you reaching out to these souls how are you reaching out to your customers how are you relating to your husband to your wife how are you relating to your friends how is this is there love or has your love waxed cold and if love is missing in the whole picture if there is no love then there is a problem and that's why we are seeing that many people are suffering from a syndrome called love in adequacies many people are shut in isolated depressed suicidal uh fighting with some something they don't know because love is absent in their lives one thing we need to realize is that god is love and the first commandment is love and it says love your neighbors you love yourself but uh the lord began to show me that many of us are we love material things more than we love human beings we love that car more than we love that human being we love that 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 dress we love that hair we love you know that interior decor we love you know that ministry to have a certain excellent look more that we love the people that will come to occupy those seats we love the material aspects of life and we've forgotten that god wants us to love his people love the people that are around you and that's why this scripture should like ring such a strong bell in your spirit today for i was hungry you gave me nothing to eat matthew 25 i was thirsty you gave me nothing to drink i was a stranger you did not invite me in i needed clothes and you did not clothe me i was sick and in prison you did not look for me how many people can easily say easily say that they show a pure love they express their love because love is expressive god so loved the world that he gave so love gives love is expressive and if love is expressive when we look at whatever we are doing especially as even ministers 
Are we doing it from the place of love? Do we? How do we give to those people that come and they are really in need? Because they are not just in need of prayer. They are not just in need of a prophecy. They are not just in need of a demon being cast out of them. They are in need of love. It is love that will heal many souls and not just a prophetic word. Casting out of demons and all those things that we do in the name of the Lord. God wants us to know that the greatest and, uh, uh, can I say, the greatest desire for any human being is love. I, I just want to open this other scripture that says, even if I prophesy in many tongues, even if I cast out demons and I have no love, I am like a clanging symbol, you know? I am like a clanging symbol. Uh, and, 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 and this is, this is how many of us are before God. It actually, is this the same scripture that I read earlier, the first Corinthians, um, first Corinthians, uh, uh, first Corinthians 13 verse two. And, and if you read further on, uh, you see that the one thing that is deficient in many of the people that are doing the work of the ministry is not that they can't do it with excellence. It's not that they cannot be able to, 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 to pull out the best marketing strategy. Uh, it's not that they cannot be able to, uh, you know, uh, advertise themselves the way that uh, they should. The main problem is that love is not at the center of everything that we are doing. So the Bible says in the book of First Corinthians chapter 13, from verse 1 to 13, that if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and deliver my body to be burned but have not love, I gain nothing. Then it goes to say love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy nor boast. It's not arrogant. It's not rude. It does not insist on its way. This is from the ESV version. It's not irritable, resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. So the essence of ministry, the essence of the gospel was that it reaches out to humanity or to the souls of men from a place of love. And God is love. God is love. He is love. And so if we want to say we are of God and that we are children of God, the first proof of who we are when we say we are children of God, the first proof to the heathens that we are children of God is not how well we have put together that conference. It's not by the rich array of different speakers. It's not from... Um, you know, you know, the good advertising, the, the sticky, the, the standing out posters and flyers. No, it's not by how well we stand in that line as protocol or as ashes. No, it's not by how eloquent we speak when we stand on that stage. It's not by the depth of our revelations and when people are saying go deeper, go deeper. It's not by how enlightened you seem to be or how motivating your speech sounds. It is not by the glamour of your clothes and how well presentable you look. But it is in the how. How did you say it? How did you, 
How did you do things? Did you do it from a place of love and compassion and for care of those sheep? Did you do it from a place where those sheep felt that God loved them? Did you do it from a place where those people felt the love of God or not? So in essence, the Lord is not just wanting us to manifest the power of the Holy Ghost without manifesting the Holy Ghost himself. And the Holy Ghost is Jesus himself. Jesus is love. So the thing here is we need to start manifesting Jesus, manifesting love. Jesus is love. So we need to start manifesting love, not just power, but love. Because when we manifest Jesus and people begin to see Jesus in us, when we manifest love and people begin to see this love, when we are manifesting Jesus, it means they will be drawn to him. They will be drawn to Jesus. If I be lifted up, the scripture says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. If the love of Jesus is openly uh, demonstrated in most of our activities, our programs, our actions, our transactions, our conversations, in the way we do things, even towards strangers, then men will be drawn to Jesus. So why are men not drawn to Jesus? It's because we are so keen on demonstrating power, revelation, demonstrating how well we can prophesy accuracy. And this will turn men to you as a vessel and not really to Jesus. Yet it is Jesus that men should be turning to. We need to go back to the foundation of the gospel, which is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for God so loved. So that's the foundation of the gospel. And, you know, interestingly, there is an awakening that is happening right now. But it has come to me so strongly that the great awakening that we all want to see, the great revival, can only be ignited by love and the demonstration of, of love and not just power and can only be sustained also by love it is okay to demonstrate power because yes the Holy Ghost is power but if the power is demonstrated without love then we are already failing and we are not going to draw in man and sustain this man men here not gender sensitive in the kingdom, the kingdom of God is suffering a violence. And I can attribute this to a violence called lovelessness. And the first thing we need to do right now is to ask the Lord to fill us with love. That we can begin to overflow with his love so that we can be able to pour it unto the people that come around us. Because if we are void of love, there is nothing that we can pour out unto others. So many people need to allow God to heal them, to deal with them in their hearts so that hearts can be restored back to love. The revival that we need right now is a revival of love. You shouldn't be in the house of God and still find that in the house of God there are people that are dying the death of no love. They are suffering the sickness of no love. They are wounded because of no love. That shouldn't be the case. And so truth be told, it's a time to really look into the how instead of the what. The what might be okay, but the how is not okay. And that's the honest truth. The Holy Spirit wants us to reflect and work on it so that we can become examples of love, walk in love, 
we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. That will spark off great revival. Takes me back to the book of Acts, where the early church, they loved each other. They were united in love. They fellowshiped in love. Fellowship was sweet in those days because it was fellowships of love. They shared in all things. And that's how they, you know, they, 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 they were a good example of Matthew 25, 42 to 45, that they shared in the cup of tea. They shared with the sick. They, they, they were not a selfish church. And we can read 1 Peter 3, 8 to 10, which says, finally, be all of one mind, be loving toward one another, be gracious and be kind. Do not repay evil for evil or curse for curse, but on the contrary, bless, knowing that this you are called, so that you may receive a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. The ultimate call from this scripture is to just love one another. Now, gauge yourself and see whether you love your car more than you love your neighbor, whether you love your dog more than you love your neighbor, whether you love your house more than you love your neighbor, whether you love your ministry more than you love the people you're leading, whether you love money more than you love the humans that are around you. It's really a self-introspection that may lead to the repentance of one that is humble and willing for the Lord to use them as a vessel of love. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening.